my name is Hayden Adams, and I'm the uh, founder at Uniswap. This talk is called Building on Uniswap. So what is this talk about? It was going to be a talk about Uniswap, but now it's a weather advisory. A hurricane is a tropical cyclone that takes effect in the and North Pacific, and Eastern North Pacific. A typhoon is a tropical cyclone that takes place in the Northwest Pacific. Super Typhoon Hagibis is a Category 5 hurricane that's kind of directly to Japan. There it is. It's on its way. All right, what does this talk about? <laughs> this talk is about Uniswap. It's about what can be built on it today. It's about how we can expand its utility, uh, you know, in Uniswap version 2, and then how we can scale Uniswap while retaining its utility. So, what is Uniswap? It's first and foremost a decentralized exchange protocol. It, it makes use of automated market making. It makes use of pooled and tokenized liquidity. And what that means is in a, in a traditional exchange, you kind of have buyers and sellers matched up on an order book. Uh, in Uniswap, you sort of automate that whole process, and then you give people a token that sort of represents their position. It's easy to understand and use, and that's one of the most important things. Uh, so why is it needed? Um, first, it lowers the barrier of entry to the participation in finance. So, in Uniswap, anyone can be a market maker. This is the current distribution of market makers on Uniswap, as of a few weeks ago. Um, about 25% of people in the $2.5 million die pool come from users who, put, who use less than 1%. So it basically allows you to pull together a lot of small market makers and do what used to be only a whales game. Uh, anyone can create and list an asset. This is super important. Uh, in Uniswap right now, there's over 800 tokens. About 100 to 150 have actual usage. Uh, it's a lot easier to get listed on Uniswap than on NASDAQ or even on a, central, or on a centralized exchange or even on uh, sort of off-chain order book decentralized exchanges. Uh, anyone can build on top of it, and this is more of the topic of this, this talk. Uh, part of the reason for that is it's all open source. It has an open source front end, documentation, smart contract, SDK. And so, you know, since I launched last November, there have been a number of projects that start, have started building on top of it. Uh, so, like, what are, the, what are the use cases right now? It seems like a lot of people are using it for trading tokens on Ethereum. So, trading interfaces, wallets, DEX aggregators. And then we have, you know, some people want to use it to earn interest as a market maker. Uh, what they're doing is they're maintaining a 50-50 ratio of ETH and the NRC20 token, and then they're earning uh, fees on trades between the two. Um, you could, one option you could do is you could use that liquidity as collateral, take out a loan against it, and basically be able to leverage up on market making. Uh, another option is create a liquidity source for an application you care about, so MakerDAO, uh, put in a lot of, or there's a lot of MKR, there's a lot of Spank, uh, and the reason is tokens like Spank have a really hard time getting listed on exchanges because they have to do with the adult industry. Um, some people, and this is the one that I'm more interested in, is like integrating Uniswap directly inside of applications. So, for example, you could, you know, lock up ETH and, and MakerDAO, borrow DAI, swap that DAI for ETH, lock that up and MakerDAO again, and you can kind of loop through protocols to, to leverage up. So there's been you know, some projects that have tried this out, like Open, uh, Nuo does some stuff like this. Um, but what we really want to do is we want to improve Uniswap so that it can serve more use cases than it does today. Uh, and we're going to do that with Uniswap version 2. Okay, so the first and uh, most, and one of my favorite features is a decentralized price oracle. <coughs> Uh, the second is, you know, direct ERC-20 to ERC-20 pairs. Right now, Uniswap forces all tokens to be paired with ETH, and there's a lot of, there's a, there's a big advantage there, but then there's also some versatility that you can get out of uh, allowing arbitrary pairs. Uh, and finally, we refactored the entire code base to make it a lot more flexible, I think more secure, uh, and sort of better for the long term. Okay, so how do these oracles work? Uh, well, the idea of the oracles is that it provides a maximally decentralized, on-chain price feed for any ERC-20 token with a very clear incentive structure, um, very easy to reason about, uh, the, like the cost of attack, uh, how secure it is. Um, and it, it can be useful for things like synthetics, uh, lending, automated trading, uh, stuff like that. Um, one example use case that we're looking at is, you know, Augur needs a rep to ETH price feed for, for their version two. Um, so actually before I get on, I'm gonna maybe explain a little bit of how these oracles work. Um, so, the, the most meaningful price, you know, right now there's already projects that use Uniswap as an oracle, where they try to checkpoint the price uh, for maybe some sort of lending system or uh, some sort of synthetic asset, uh, but it, it can be firm run, 
Uh, any transaction that checks the price on Uniswap, and basically someone can manipulate the price right ahead of that transaction uh, and basically you know, mess up the Oracle for a relatively cheap, uh, for a pretty cheap, uh, it doesn't cost that much. Um, especially since you could synchronously like, front run it, move the price, let an Oracle transaction go through, and then push the price back uh, synchronously. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna have every, every uh, transaction on Uniswap um, check the price, uh, and if it's the first uh, transaction of the block, we store that price. Um, and what we can do is we can basically uh, average prices across multiple blocks, so that you know manipulating the price on Uniswap, you could you know you might be able to manipulate it for one block, but for mani manipulating across a thousand blocks or across an hour or a day, uh, you know you what we're ideally wanting to expose is allowing people to build uh, pretty much arbitrary time length oracles on top of Uniswap. So if you check the oracle once at the beginning of the day and once at the end of the day, you can get a perfect one hour uh, time weighted average price of the price on Uniswap at the beginning of the, uh, of the block. Uh, the reason we do it at the beginning of the block is basically because um, in order to manipulate the price at the beginning of a block, you have to be the last transaction in the previous block, um, which means you're opening yourself up to an arbitrage in the next block. And doing that across you know, a thousand blocks uh, can be very expensive. Okay. Can you use the microphone? Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay, the, the other uh, feature we're working on is ERC20 to ERC20 pairs. Uh, the main idea here is to allow liquidity providers to take on a wider range of positions. Um, also allow for lower slippage and fees on direct ERC20 to ERC20 pairs um, for ones that, that, that have a lot of liquidity in them. Um, Right now, you know, when you go ERC20 to ERC20, you have to go ERC20 to ETH, ETH to ERC20, you pay a 0.3% fee on both sides, and then there's slippage on both sides. Um, it, this, in general, we think increases the uh, protocol flexibility. Um, so an example for like, the use case where this is maybe most interesting is allowing tokens to be paired against stable coins, or even stable coins paired against each other, or just ha very highly correlated assets. You know, if you create, um, there's, there's all sorts of different projects where they, they create assets that are you know, meant to be correlated with each other. For example, you can imagine like CDI and DAI, you can create a liquidity pool between the two. They're just gonna, you're going to have very low loss, uh, you know, very low, uh, basically the losses in Uniswap come from the prices diverging in the assets. Um, so an example use case uh, would be a CDI to CUSDC pair on Uniswap. Um, this, this is a... So a while back we were thinking about the idea of like a DAI to USDC pair as, a, as an example use case um, for, for this. Uh, but one thing that kept coming up was the opportunity cost of lending uh, stable coins. So right now if you, if you lend uh, DAI or USDC, you can make about a 15% return versus if you were a liquidity provider on the system. In Uniswap, you would have to be making a 15% return for it to be worth it. Um, but uh, if we have the sort of ability to create arbitrary um, ERC20, ERC20 pairs, we could create a pair between CDI, CUSDC, um, where when someone wants to trade, you know, the, the trader is abstracted from them, they just send some DAI to the contract. The DAI goes through Compound, converts it to CDI, and then CDI goes to through Uniswap, converted to CUSDC, CUSDC back to Compound, or USDC, and then USDC back to Uniswap in a single transaction. And what you have is for the liquidity provider, they're, a, they're basically leveraging up, they're earning interest on Compound, while earning fees on Uniswap. For the trader, all they deal with is DAI and USDC. Um, and so they have a, there's a much lower opportunity cost in this case for being a liquidity provider. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's no LP loss as long as the token maintain their peg in this case. Now this is not true. Uh, you should be telling me that's wrong uh, because technically they can have a different interest rate. Uh, so there might be a very, very small, very, very small potential loss between the two, but not, not very much. Um, so yeah, users can swap DAI for USDC at very low prices, and then you could also even imagine this C DAI and CUSDC uh, liquidity pool tokens then being used as collateral um, because it's very stable. Uh, and then not only have you leveraged up by lending and market making at the same time, but then you're taking out a loan against that same collateral again. Um, yes, the money Legos get kind of crazy, uh, but we, we have a lot of fun with it. Um, okay, so. One of the things, that, the thing that this has been focused on so far is like the idea of building on top of Uniswap. Um, and we also want to improve the UX of Uniswap. And one of the best ways to improve UX for a, for a single application uh, is using Layer 2. 
Um, but with most layer twos that have existed up until this point, it's been always it's always made this sacrifice where we can no longer interoperate cleanly and smoothly with other with other applications. Um, so there's you know a few different applications out there. There's Plasma, there's ZK Rollup, and now there's Optimistic Rollup. Um, maybe I'll, I'll very briefly, uh, very very quickly, high level explain. Um, optimistic Rollup, you post blocks. Um, you, optim you execute them optimistically, which means you assume everything is valid, unless it's proven invalid. Um, and then, basically, there's some data off-chain that, that users can have that proves whether or not a transaction is valid or invalid. Um, very, very scalable, because you basically execute everything off-chain and you don't put any data on-chain. Uh, then you have uh, ZK Rollup. Uh, this is the idea that you can, do a, you can put data on-chain, uh, very like, minimal data per transaction, and then you do a snarks proof that all those data, the, all that data was executed um, properly. Uh, optimistic rollup basically combines the two ideas. We execute everything optimistically. There's blocks that are posted, and you assume that they're valid. Uh, but then you post the data that you need for the fraud proof uh, to Ethereum. Um, okay, so optimistic rollup is lit. Um, optimistic rollup can scale Uniswap. Uh, we can we can do generalized smart contracts on it. Oh yeah, an optimistic rollup can scale generalized interoperable smart contracts on Ethereum. Uh, so we can continue to build stuff on top of Uniswap while scaling it. Uh, some, some credit to Plasma Group. There's Carl over there. Uh, I don't know if anyone else from Plasma Group's in here. Maybe not. Uh, but made up of Jinglan Wang, Carl Flush, Ben Jones, Will Meister. And then credit to Vitalik Group. <laughs> yeah, made up of Vitalik, uh, who has also done a lot of, most of the research not most of the research, but he, you know, there was the plasma research, the role of re research, for sure, uh, and creating Ethereum. Um, so can optimistic rollup do Uniswap? Yes, it can, and we built it. It can do about, and by we, I mean uh, Uniswap created a front end and Plasma Group created a back end. Uh, it can do about 250 transactions per second, or it can if, if we optimize the client uh, on Istanbul. Um, it can, you know, has native meta transactions, so you can queue up multiple transactions. Uh, and yeah, it was built by Uniswap and Plasma Group. So now I'm going to ask you all to pick a team. <laughs> really important. Are you Team Unicorn? Unicorns are majestic. They're shy. They're beautiful, and they love long walks in nature. Or are you Team Pig? Pigs are cute. They're very smart. They're the life of the party, and they love eating until they fall asleep. Okay, raise your hand if you're Team Uni. <laughs> this is sad. Come on, a few more people raise your hand. <laughs> okay. okay, raise your hand if you're Team Pig. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it seems to be 50-50 mathematically, but not in this room. I guess the pigs like, like my talk more. Okay, so we created the site. It's, it's called unipig.exchange. Um, I'm going to demo it right now. I think I have time. How much time do they have? Okay, I have time. Good. Good. All right. One second. Actually, I'm going to be really hard refresh. One second. <coughs> I wanted this screen. Okay, cool. All right, Unipedic Data Exchange is a demo of Uniswap on Optimistic Rollup. We've been working on it for the last month. All right, so the first thing you, we need some form of civil resistance because the money is all fake, so we can't charge you fees. Um, all right, so you can go get tokens from Twitter. It, we have a pretty great Twitter faucet. All right, it brings up this tweeting at Unipig Exchange. I'm gonna tweet, waiting for my tweet. Come on, tweet. Yay, okay. So we just got sent 30 Uni tokens and 30 Piggy tokens on our Layer 2 wallet. Uh, this wallet is a burner wallet uh, built into the browser. 
you see, you can open it up, there's a wallet. Um, now, unlike most demos, I'm not going to be waiting very long for these transactions to confirm. See? And it's done. There's two UX. <laughs> It's done. <laughs> Although we don't want to, we want to, we want to sell all our pigs so that it increases the value of the stack. And it's done. Okay, we also have um, triggered an airdrop. Let's do this. Okay. So the idea of this is um, it's basically to encourage participation. So if two people match up and they both have wallets on your pig, they can scan each other. Ready? Just like that. Wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. And I got 10 tokens on this account and 10 tokens on the other account. Um, yeah, so the, the, the real thing with Optimistic Rollup is it's a massive, massive UX improvement over, over using the base chain. Right? You can get instant confirmations. Um, you can get uh, 250 transactions per second. Um, you can, you know, you don't need to do the approve and transfer, you can basically queue them up together, or it basically doesn't exist. Um, yeah, uh, let's see our stats here. So we've done about 2,100 transactions uh, through our DEF CON, we've had a bunch of people try this demo. Um, I didn't realize this, I always pay a really high gas price for all my transactions. The average gas cost of a transaction on the, or the average wait time of transactions on Ethereum is over a minute. Uh, so we've saved 3,600 minutes on these 2,000 transactions of people just sitting around waiting. So that is a lot of time. Um, yeah. All right, anyway, I, I think I'm going to open up to questions. If you have any questions about this demo, about Uniswap V2. If the transactions are optimistic, how soon will people know that I'm lying? How soon will people know that you're lying? Yeah. Um, OK, so you, as soon as they, they hit the, uh, basically, so you, you have someone forming a block. They submit that block to Ethereum. It, so it's a block header, and a, so it's just a hash with a Merkle root, uh, and then some data. Anyone in the world, uh, as long as they have an Ethereum node, they'll see all that data, uh, and that's all they need to uh, sort of validate every, every transaction on the block. So ideally, someone is watching the chain. Anyone who cares about it can watch the chain, uh, catch and valid tra transactions, um, and so basically, as soon as it's submitted, someone, as long as someone's watching, should find it. Any other? You know what? Trading baseball cards or, or something like that would be, would be really, really cool. Now you can like really like do it just like the old days. Do you happen to work at a crypto startup that, trade that involves baseball cards? <laughs> no. No. No, no, I agree. I, so one thing I really like about, about this sort of, what has felt really validating about building this demo is that I do feel like you could create something kind of like the way CryptoKitties went viral. Um, and it just kind of shut down Ethereum. We could, you know, create something like that where it's a viral. Unipig is not necessarily like a super viral game because it doesn't have that many elements to it. But you can create something CryptoKitties like that could reach a much, much, much wider audience of people without like completely using up the entire capacity of the network. Yo, yes, funny to me. Yes, funny. Fair is great, but do you, do you think it's going to break liquidity because it's going to create a lot of new many errors? That is a good question. Um, I think that the way that I see it playing out is that there, for the vast majority of tokens, they would still be paired with ETH. Um, the only really, uh, ETH or maybe some stable coins. Um, I think that there are very specific use cases. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of like yield protocol. Um, that maybe makes usage uh, of sort of, arbitra of, of the arbitrary pairs. But for most of them, I just see them being paired with like maybe ETH, maybe DAI, maybe USDC, you have a couple. and. If you're only routing through a couple, it's actually not that difficult to kind of check the price on a, on a couple different ones. Um, yeah. Actually, if you want to, uh, so the idea of the yield protocol is that if you um, you take Y tokens and you pool them with their respective tokens, so if you have like Y MKR to MKR on Uniswap, and you have the Oracle features, then you could create an interest rate Oracle that can be used in systems like Compound. Um, yeah. Any other questions? What's up? I've heard discussions about determi determining the, uh, the, tr the transaction fee on Uniswap as a meter to have a constant slippage for a given price. 
has there any been any research on like instead of using a 0.3 percent, just having something that's more dynamic that could uh, reduce? The there, there is, there has been research. Actually, a lot of that research. I don't know if you know, uh, if you've heard of Charlie Noyes at uh, Paradigm. He um, he's been he's been investigating investigating that. Um, at the current moment, uh, I, I don't have any sort of formula that I think is better. Um, one option is you could just really create pools of a few different denominations. And the problem there is you once again fractal liquidity. Um, it's definitely like an important area of research. Uh, some of my intuition around this is basically if you had a different fee, all it would really mean is like maybe almost like a different liquidity level where it meets equilibrium. Like, you know, so there's sort of a point where the volume, like the kind of natural volume and the liquidity kind of matches up. And I think that that point just kind of changes based off the fee level. But for certain pairs, it's true that like, you know, if you can have a specific pair that's really, really, oh, I think that's about 20 minutes, but basically if you could have a specific pair that's like really like tightly, like, you know, very, very tight margins on another exchange, obviously Uniswap becomes less efficient for that. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Uh, so this doesn't use meta transactions actually. Um, this uses uh, Unipig uses uh, a in browser burner wallet, um, which is nice so it can like sign for your private key. It's, it's stored in your in your local storage on your or your or your cookies or whatever. Um, so we're in, so that uh, the idea of, when I said native meta transactions, what I really mean is native account abstraction. Uh, basically, the idea is in Bitcoin, for example, you can you can sort of take multiple UXCOs and you can kind of send them, like you can basically paralyze, or like, say these three transactions all need to happen synchronously. Uh, in Uniswap, or in, I mean, on Ethereum, uh, you have to use a smart contract to do it, like, so it makes it a little bit more complicated to kind of queue up, for example, if you want to do an approve and then a transaction that uses transfer from, you can't naturally queue them up directly from your wallet. Yeah, you uh, but uh, something like optimistic rollup would essentially allow you to queue up transactions so that you can, you know, yeah. All right, yeah. All right, I think that's, I think we're out of time. <laughs>